<laughs> good afternoon. Welcome back to Monday Motivation with my good friend, Dr. Serena H. Chen, a colleague of mine from IRMS in Livingston, New Jersey. I'm Alice Creasy, co-founder and CEO of Many Answers, creator of the Fertility Answers app platform. Now, there's seemingly nothing else going on in the world right now beyond coronavirus. We know this, right? It has become pretty difficult to go about life as usual when never in our lifetimes, I don't think, Serena, have you or I ever seen whole cities in different countries locked down. I mean, we've seen containment for Ebola. We've seen containment, you know, for we've seen pregnant women leave cities to protect pregnancies from Zika. We've never witnessed something like this before. So, um, you know, I hate to say never, but like I remember vaguely SARS and MERS and, and it didn't really come over here, right? It so didn't. It wasn't yeah, we really... felt so, I, so protected. Yeah, it seemed like some big news far away. And now people are, are really feeling it here, although... Um, there's a lot of reassuring data in the United States, despite the fact that they are identifying more cases and they are doing more travel restrictions. I think there's there's still a lot of things that are reassure, reassuring about the situation in the United States. Now, I don't want to belittle what's going on at all, but I do think it is um, important to remember that healthy people, pregnant women and children do not appear to be susceptible to getting a severe case of the virus. Um, it looks like um, the deaths so far in the United States and um, have been people who are already very, very vulnerable to viruses anyway, which are the elderly with co co something we like to call comorbidities, which usually right. is stuff like I, you already have a chronic lung disease. You already have like COPD that, and, COPD, or right. some lung or, cancer. You know, exactly. You know, you're on uh, chemotherapy. You're you have right. heart failure. So really, like if you have a serious, serious underlying illness, it it does increase your risk of death, honestly, from any infection. And coronavirus is no exception to that. Now, but it does unlike, look like the like your level of exposure, though, makes a difference, too, because we do have healthy first responders who did have have succumbed to coronavirus. That seems to be more related, no underlying health conditions to the level of exposure, massive you know, when they've been. Yes, yes, exactly. Which which and no I average person would ever have that level of inoculation. Uh, certainly not with, you know, whole festivals like South by Southwest being canceled, you know, and those, right. those, you know, really big public environments where you could have, um, you know, just extreme amounts of, of right. viral um, kind of passage from person to person. Now, um, I also was reading that there's that people aren't really showing symptoms until about five days after they've been exposed right is what but i read I, recently I think a lot of people get really crazy about that because they're just thinking everybody around them has cooties and they're going to get it but exactly. the thing is when you're asymptomatic you are not you're not really shedding as much yeah, okay right. remember this virus can only attach to respiratory epithelium which people get confused about people think it's in the air and they're going to breathe it and then they're going to get sick. But what happens is when people cough or sneeze, if they're acute, if they're ill or they're shedding virus, the virus can live on surfaces for about a week. And we are touching surfaces all the time. All the time. And, and then we are touching our faces. And the ports of entry are the mouth, the nose, and the eyes because the mucous membranes in the eyes can are attached to the nose and eventually lead to the oropharynx. So this goes back to, you know, biology, how everything's connected there. So those are the ports of entry. That's how you get to the virus gets to the respiratory epithelium. It doesn't go through your skin. You can't really breathe like somebody who's, who's in another room. And then is you, if you breathe the same air, it's not airborne. Right. Not it's airborne. literally just leave your face alone. That's why washing your hands, you know, makes such 
is the most important thing and the hand sanitizer's out, but they say soap and water for 20 seconds is, is Honestly, better anyway. Soap and water is really the number one best way to sanitize your hands. Hand sanitizer is only helpful if you don't have good, easy access to a sink. Sure. Right? Right. So, right. So, and we're seeing these crazy things where people are, are like just buying out all the hand sanitizer. Meanwhile, there's tons of soap in the stores. Yeah. Um, so, right. It, <laughs> it doesn't totally make sense. And this, this run in the grocery stores maybe is because the CDC told people at risk that they should be prepared to stay home. So if you have severe heart disease, the CDC doesn't want you going out. They want you to have uh, your healthy relative or your healthy friend go to the grocery store for you instead of you going out. So there is some advice on the CDC website about making sure you have supplies to be able to stay at home if you are vulnerable to coronavirus, but not really yeah. for people who are healthy. Okay. Right. So right. this run on the grocery stores doesn't really make medical sense. 